welcome to Comparative Politics News. I'm your host, Joel Ritter. The purpose of today's newscast is to develop a hypothesis about the state of the island Hispaniola. Hispaniola is shared by the nations of Haiti and the Dominican Republic, which share similar colonial histories by the French and Spanish, respectively, and nearly identical per capita real GDP until 1960. However, they couldn't be any more different today. So, since they declared independence from their respective colonizers, their history has diverged quite a lot. Haiti couldn't pay its national debt, so the U.S. bank took over Haiti's bank. The U.S. occupied Haiti until 1915, but they still controlled the government and economy until 1934. Many Haitians went to the Dominican Republic for jobs, but this did nothing to improve the relations between the two countries. Thousands of Haitian workers were slaughtered in 1937 under the order of Dominican ruler Rafael Trujillo. There was more instability until 1957 when Francois Duvalier became dictator. He was wildly popular and surrounded by a personality cult, but his regime was very corrupt. Jean-Bertrand Aristide became president, but was removed through a coup and sent to the United States. The UN arranged for his return, but this action was controversial and caused great political violence throughout the nation. However, in the Dominican Republic, things went differently. In 1930, Rafael Trujillo became dictator. He was very popular and stabilized the currency and paid the country's entire debt. He also increased the standard of living. However, he murdered many of his political rivals, and he was also the one who ordered the slaughter of all of the Haitians, which was quite terrible. His anti-communist stance brought him favor in the United States, but his corruption eventually destroyed that bridge. Trujillo was assassinated in 1960 after his shady political activities began to come to light. The Dominicans struggled for many years afterwards to regain footing in a post-Trujillo society. Later, free elections were installed in the Dominican, although instability continued. Joaquin Balaguer became president, and he did many things to improve the stability of the government by increasing, decreasing inflation, but still ousted many political opponents. In 1996, Lionel Reyna was elected, and he made great attempts to bring the Dominican into the global economy. One thing that must be considered when comparing the two countries is the imperialistic history. At this point in history, Haiti would be considered an LDC, or less developed country, and the Dominican Republic would be considered an NIC, which is a newly industrialized country. This is because Haiti was exploited far more by its colonizers, the French, than the Dominican Republic was by its colonizers, the Spanish. And French relied on Haiti as a valuable agriculture colony far, far more before Spain relied on the Dominican Republic. And also at this point in history, Spain cannot afford to exploit Haiti because they had enough problems of their own on the home front. Also, this colonization created social identities in the two countries that were not present before. There was no concern about the native populations, most of which had already been wiped out. The brand new social identities created in the two countries differed because in Haiti there was a mixture of French and African descendancy, while in the Dominican Republic it was primarily European. And this mix of heritage, as well as Haiti's past with slavery, allowed for more political instability in the current time. Ethnic identity plays a great role in the life on Hispaniola. In the Dominican Republic, many Haitians are tre treated with anti-Haitian sentiments and they are even forced to work in Dominican fields in near slave labor-like conditions. Even in Haiti alone, there is great conflict between those who speak Haitian Creole and those who speak French. French is seen as a superior language, mostly by the wealthy members of the nation, and most schooling is done in French, thus alienating the people who speak Haitian Creole, which is mostly learned in homes from childhood. And little, this lack of education makes the job market in Haiti that is already dismal even worse. Also, another thing that has been detrimental to the difference between the two countries in recent times is the big earthquake that hit Haiti in 2011, which killed ten th tens of thousands of people and left many thousands more in refugee camps. The weather in both capitals, port au prince and Santo Domingo is mostly cloudy at 86 degrees. And although before the Europeans came, Haiti and the Dominican Republic had similarly lush landscapes. At this point, 40% of all of the land in Haiti has been stripped of vegetation. Like that. And the effects of deforestation and poor land protection have been compounded since 1960. Jared Diamond, a columnist for the Global News, said, Haiti's poverty forces people to remain dependent on forest-derived charcoal for fuel, thereby accelerating the destruction of the last remaining forests. This was a due to a dictatorship that desired to make the elites wealthy. The farmers had to move from area to area to get resources because where they were before, all the resources had run out. Another reason of the divergence between the two countries 
was the trade embargo of 1993. This declined the GDP of Haiti by 25%. This caused Haiti's assembly industry to collapse, and only the production in the garment sector increased after the embargo ended. One critical difference was the rent-seeking behavior of Haiti, where the government did only what it wanted with little promotion to public services and infrastructure. However, during the Dominican Republic's ongoing Trujillo re regime, he improved agriculture and infrastructure. The main goal of comparative politics news is to compare the conditions and economies of Haiti and the Dominican Republic in an insightful and meaningful way. My hypothesis as to why the Dominican Republic is as ahead of Haiti as it is mainly due to the leadership of each country throughout the 1900s, specifically after U.S. occupation of each country. They didn't do much for the freedom of the country, but they did much to improve the economy and the currency of the nation. These rulers include Trujillo and Balaguer. Haiti is much more unstable because of the doings of Duvalier and his son, and also the general na national disdain for Aristide, who was mostly forced back upon Haiti by the UN. The unique story of Hispaniola can be told and compared using a variety of factors, including history, imperialism, language, and ethnic ties, climate, geography, and economy. And in most of these factors, the Dominican Republic wins. History and imperialism fall in its favor because the Dominican was less exploited by its colonizers and had a post-imperialist experience of harsh but effective leaders, whereas Haiti's leaders did not do as much for the nation. Haiti also suffers with the language barrier between the speakers of Creole and French, which the Dominican Republic does not face, as most citizens speak Spanish. The exploitation of French colonization, with little regard to the land, has left Haiti an agriculturally poor and deforested land, while efforts to prevent this problem were almost non-existent even into the late 1990s. Lastly, the Dominican Republic fares much better economically than does Haiti, due to all the factors listed above. The production sector of Haiti failed after the trade embargo of the 1990s, a setback that the Dominican Republic never faced. Also, Haiti practiced rent-seeking behaviors while during the same period, during the same period of the Dominican Republic paid much closer attention to public services and agriculture. All in all, the Dominican Republic has topped Haiti in almost every factor, not because Haiti was cursed by the devil, as some say, but because of a lethal combination of social and economic events that took place since colonization. Hopefully, Haiti will begin to fare much better in the future than it has in its tortured past. That's all we have for you today with Compared to Politics News. I'm Joel Ritter. Thank you for watching.